try to stick away from playing those kind of hands this early in the tournament, especially in early position when I'm not going to be in position. What I will be doing is looking to play a lot of pots in position against actually more of the weaker opponents as well. We do have a pretty big hand off the bat right here. I have nines in the small line. I'm just going to go ahead and flat here. I don't really see a point in starting to build a pot out of position, even though my hand is pretty strong in this circumstance. But it's also not strong enough to really get a lot of chips in preflop. I don't think so anyways. So I think the best option here is just to flat and... Even though we are out of position, I mean, there's we, we have a pretty good size pair, and we're going to be able to play it optimally pretty much no matter what. With this, these stacks, it's not really too hard to play this hand out of position. So when that flops comes down, I'm, I'm thinking pretty much I have the best hand. When that turn comes out, I'm thinking for sure I have the best hand. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and fire at the turn, hope that maybe... Poker Devil had flopped a four. He was in the big blind, so we got to see the flop for free. So you never know what kind of hands he could have. He could also have a flush draw and all kinds of stuff. So once I bet the turn, I'm really trying to start build a pot here when I, with my monster hand. Uh, I Actually, I don't really know what to put Randy Rio on when he checks the flop. I'm really thinking he's probably got a, like Broadway cards, like some kind of big ace or something, or just... Maybe even some medium pair that he was going for some pot control with when checking the flop. I don't really see him checking the flop with a flush draw. I don't really see him checking the flop with trips. I definitely don't. I, I guess he could check the flop with a boat, but I don't really see that happening that much either. Since there is a flush draw, you do want to try to get some value on the flop, start to build a pot. But who knows, he's he's a random and we don't really know what he's doing, but th that's just my guess right now. I, I don't really think that he has too much of a hand. He might have a hand like 10-jack on the turn where he turned a open-ended straight draw with some overs and that's why he's calling the bet. But i um, not really sure. So this river is actually really interesting because we get, have basically the second best hand that we can have here. We need to go ahead and slow this down. I mean, the only hand that really beats us here is quads. I don't really think he's going to have quads that often. But it's really weird when he goes, he raises here. It's it's <laughs> something that I didn't expect, that's for sure. I'm obviously betting here for value. And I guess maybe he could have had like a smaller pair, and I was trying to get value for that. From that, like if he had sixes or sevens or fives, he might think I have a flush draw or straight draw or something like that that missed and... He's not going to fold on the river, so that's why I'm betting for value here. But when he raises, it's kind of kind of weird, actually. And I mean, the only hands I could really think that he'd be raising for value, obviously, it would be like over pairs to the board that would give him a boat higher than what's already on the board. But by the way he's played his hand, it doesn't really look like he has that. I think he would have bet the flop with any over pairs to the flop. Any pair that was higher than eight, I think he definitely would have bet the flop. So I'm just really lost as to what's going on in this hand, and I'd, I'd really I think I have the best hand. But if he does somehow have quads, this would be a terrible spot to go ahead and shove on him and just end the tournament right here. So I make kind of a nitty play and just decide to call. It also helps because it provides some information to see what kind of hands he's going to be making this kind of play with. If he has absolute air and he was going to fold anyways, if I do shove, so that's another reason for just calling here but uh it's a little nitty just to call but i just opt to do that and he shows the king high so we did get some information we also would have never gotten any other action if we did decide to make a raise there on the river he's obviously going to fold so that was a pretty interesting hand off the bat right there And we got a few more chips now, so that's good to know. And we also got to see his hand and see that he's capable of making some plays like that. So that's also something that we can note. And so I am a little happy that I just decided to call instead of making a raise there, now that we think about it. And what we've been seeing is this player departure, who I've never heard of before. 
has been playing extremely aggressively. It seems like he's been raising almost every pot. And we haven't really seen any of his hands go to showdown, so we don't really know what kind of hands he's doing that with. And Randy Rio, he has been doing a lot of limping, so that kind of is usually a sign of a, a more weak player when they're open limping into the pots. That's just usually how it works, but I'll... Like I said, you never know. Like Sometimes the really good players do limp in the pot from early position as the first player to open, enter the pot, but you won't see me doing that. I am pretty excited that uh, I finally get a chance to display these... play this video for you guys anyways because I have basically been around the online poker scene for quite some time and for me to finally get a cash this big is just humongous for me so I'm pretty excited about it so we flop top pair here um, we could raise the flop but we're at a position it's gonna be hard to continue play if he keeps betting I mean we're, we're basically calling the flopper value here because we do have top pair top kicker I'm not really looking to fold but I also want to use some pot control here because we do have a lot of chips and I don't want to necessarily end up giving away a ton of chips because I have pretty much a marginal hand here I like just all I have is is top pair, top kicker or top two pair whatever and there's trips on the board that he could have an over pair. There's all kinds of possibilities here. And we're out of position, like I said, so I just don't really like blowing up pots out of position. But once he checks the turn, when I check to him, I'm just going to go ahead and fire the river for value. And we see that he had queen jack, so I think I got the optimal value there by checking the turn. But back to the the score, it's absolutely pretty ridiculous. Like I honestly, even now, like a month after, it still doesn't even feel real. I can't even begin to explain. I've been grinding tournaments for an absurd amount of time, like the past three years basically, and the best score I ever had was the second place in the Sunday Brawl, which was for like sixty five thousand dollars, something like that. So. This is about three times that, so it's it's definitely huge for me. And for it to be in this tournament is it's pretty awesome. So I like to think with a $500 buy-in, it's a little bit more of a difficult field to maneuver through. Not necessarily always. I mean, you could always have a bunch of satellite players at your table who are just donating chips. That's not really the case at this table. I don't think there's a lot of decent players. So we have pocket fours here. I don't really know exactly why I folded at all there, actually. Uh, maybe I timed out because I was playing another, a lot of other tables, and that's definitely the only thing that makes sense. I didn't time out this hand, which is good. 